Good evening. Uh, I'd like to call this joint finance capital facilities meeting to order. It is January 29th, 2024. Um, we have with us from the finance committee uh, Ms. Campbell, Ms. Meeker, and myself. And from the capital facilities uh, committee, we have Ms. Higgins, Ms. Walsh, and once again myself. Um, and uh, Mr. Cotton is uh, unable to attend tonight as an excuse from this meeting. Um, tonight, we will be uh, dis discussing. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Buses, HVAC projects, uh, COMF lease design team contract for the new middle school and um, building committee discussion. Uh, with that, I will, uh, unless somebody has something they want to bring up, I'm going to turn it over to the superintendent and Mr. Dunn. Uh, I'm going to turn it right over to Jack because we want to get started on the, um, the bonds that you have to before you tonight. Excellent. I guess I should mention to Mr. Cashman, uh, Mr. Dunn, Ms. Wolf and the superintendent are here tonight as well, and I appreciate everybody coming out on a snowy day. Okay. We'll start off with the first item, which is buses. I think we mentioned to you before that uh, we have an aging fleet. Um, this is the list that has been provided to uh, us from the uh, transportation director. And um, considering that we're going to going out to bond we know at a minimum we have to go out and take care of what you um, look to reimburse yourselves from July which we'll talk about in a minute but in this upcoming budget we have proposed um, replacing um, about 10 buses I think of what we're looking at to try to catch up on these from these older buses it's about one and a half million dollars worth of buses and the youngest of the buses is 10 years old. Yep, and that's typically about how long we go with them. Um, we've been having discussion about, because of COVID, we didn't put as many miles on some of the buses. Um, so we'll see as you get into your budget if you want to try to adjust this at all. But that's what they've requested. Mm -hmm. And the payment you'll see for all of this is in the budget you will see next Wednesday. Okay. Thank okay. you, Mr. Dunn. I see that we have the buses are typically between 100,000 and 200, yep. a little over 200,000 miles uh, mm -hmm. as of the beginning of the school year. Mm -hmm. So they're probably a little higher now. A little bit. Um, so the, uh, the request would be for the uh, Finance Committee to make a recommendation to the board to include this. If you are ready to do that. Uh, let's have a discussion first. Mm -hmm. Would we take delivery of all the buses at once, or and when would we, or would it be staggered? They're nine months to a year out before we'll even get them from the time we order. And when we would expect to order after the yeah, after yeah. your budget, yeah. Okay. yeah you guys still got to do a bond and everything. This is just saying so we, we like really the idea. Maybe like most the end of next school year, probably for the buses. Maybe um, between I would say between January and June. Okay. Less 2025. Yes, mm -hmm. 2026. 20, no, I'm 2025. No, you're 25. right. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Yeah, but this would encompass your next year's budget for the payment wise, unless I punt that to 26. Ms. Meeker, um, are we? Is this part of like a larger plan where like every year we're adding buses, like we're phasing out old ones and bringing in new ones, or is this sort of like a we've deferred this decision and now we really need 10 buses it's a catch-up yes okay. so the last time we did the uh, 10 buses it was 2017 we had the opportunity when Concord steam closed and we did a million dollars worth of buses at that time they were about 90 92 thousand dollars a piece now they're up to 107 a piece but uh, yeah this is to try to do that um, we try to take advantage of this when we bond because it's a lot cheaper than doing an operating lease. So if we were to use a lease and bond, bond and borrow through that in your operating budget, you'd probably be looking at between five and a half and seven percent. Mm -hmm. It's much cheaper when we do a bond and roll these things in to do it now. Mr. Dunn, how many total buses do we have? We have 22 big buses and 12 small buses. Thank you. Nearly half. 
so I guess I think the question Ms. Meeker was getting at is should we be buying two buses a year yeah. and is that obviously we couldn't start that now because we're so far behind but mm -hmm. in the future you know what compared to the bonding cost would two hundred thousand dollars roughly a year be cheaper for taxpayers over the long run to buy two buses than bond payments on 10 buses at a time i'd have that i'd have that conversation with the transportation director because as the buses change each year then you have different parts too uh, so um so he different likes regulations so mm -hmm. <laughs> It, it may be advantage to take it all at one time. I think my gut is he's going to say, I get to a year, yeah, I'll take them. That'd be my gut. But um, I think we'd want to talk about the bigger ramifications of get buying every year two buses. I think. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that would uh, be a good thing to discuss during our budget as to whether or not it's cheaper to buy 10 with a bond at a time or two a year and mm -hmm. spread it out. Mm -hmm. I know in the past we bought them, you know, every five years or so. Try, yeah. Other things take precedent, which unfortunately, but you get so far, then you say you got to replace them. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. Mr. Dunn, or maybe Mr. Cashman, I don't know which of you can answer this one. Is uh, is are these ten buses uh, increased, causing increased maintenance? And if so, do we have any estimate of what that is? Yeah, the, the biggest thing that happens with the buses is because they're basically sitting over in salt, because mm -hmm. the salt yard is right, and you'll see it from the aerial, they rust out. So what happens is the steps start to go, and then they're welding steps and fabricating it, trying to make the buses. That's the biggest impact that we see. Okay. Other questions? Go ahead, Ms. Meeker. Just um, over the course of the last year, I've heard it drop in a conversation about electric buses they yeah. don't know much about that conversation that we've had mm -hmm. is the expectation that we're also going to phase into electric buses or is that it's become so difficult to attain that we're just putting that on the back burner no um, we have applied for two grants now and we have not gotten those okay. they've gone to even smaller towns than than us mm -hmm. um, we kind of figured we'd be advantageous to get it because of the local so an electric bus is estimated to get about 120 miles per charge in the summer. In the winter, they're estimating 80 miles. Okay, there's infrastructure that needs to be put up at the the Comf. It's called COMF. What we were mentioning, we'll talk, we'll talk about. Um, so we're working with the city. It's just a matter of when do we get the right grant? Because right now the charger and the bus is 325,000. Yeah. 77 passenger bus is 107. Yeah. So. For us to go and buy one bus when you could buy almost three buses mm -hmm. doesn't make sense at the moment yep. okay. but it's still on the radar part of your strategic plan it's just one the right thing so there's a third grant that came out that just extended it and that's a rebate so you put the money out and then you get the money back the last one was a grant where you could have gotten the money but we partnered with highland <coughs> and we did not get awarded it gotcha. so i think it was was it rumney that got it yeah small yeah. towns yeah. I don't quite rural. based on the miles because yeah. the rural average towns. bus yeah. does 55 miles a day on the on the routes that doesn't include the you know athletics and the other trips but that's about what they do a day so it's well within that and we do have one vehicle that is in the electric fleet right now that's a van used by our uh, one of our maintenance guys he um, he was he chose to do that because one we could get it right then and there we also got a significant discount. It was like $12,000 cheaper. And um, when that charges, it charges full charge to about 80. And then in the summer, I think it's like 109. But it, he does 40, 50 miles within that mm -hmm. district, and it works. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? More discussion? Does anyone wish to make a motion? Go ahead, Ms. Walsh. I'll move that the Capital Facilities and Finance Committee recommend that the school board approve the purchase of one and a half million dollars in school buses using bonds and authorize the administration to prepare the necessary public documents and public meeting schedules to authorize a public meeting to vote on the bonds to fund the replacement bu buses. The board further authorizes the administration to put the bond payments into the FY25 budget. Final numbers will replace the budget numbers when the bonds are 
result. Thank you. And I will ask for a second, but first, does this, I'll ask Mr. Dunn, does this need to be a motion from the Finance Committee or from the Capital oh, Facilities Committee, or point. can it come from either one? <laughs> Probably would be finance. Would be finance? Yeah. In that respect, I will make that same <laughs> motion, <laughs> that move that the Capital, I, I just wanted to check because as yeah. you were saying it, I was thinking, hmm. Um, I move that the Capital Facilities and Finance Committee recommend that the school board approve the purchase of $1.5 million in school buses using bonds and authorize the administration to prepare the necessary public documents and public meeting schedules to authorize a public meeting to vote on the bonds to fund the replacement buses. The board further authorizes, or I recommend that the board further authorizes the administration to put the bond payments into the FY25 budget. Final numbers will replace the budget numbers when bonds are sold. Is there a second from the Finance Committee? Seconded. Oh. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a Finance Committee vote, so all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion passes, and we will make that recommendation to the board. Thank you, and thank you, Ms. Walsh, for your okay. Well, this is combined. I know. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Um, just want to make sure we're didn't want to leave anybody out no. <laughs> okay now we'll move on to the HVAC projects um, just as a little background I think you know about a year ago this kind of discussion had started as it relates to Beaver Meadow Broken Graham and the high school um, so we'll start off first and, and Matt will probably chime in on some of these projects so the first one is Broken Graham Broken Ground is going to look at a full replacement of its HVAC, new controls, adding de dehumidified air, and that's going to happen at each of these older schools. So with updated equipment, you're looking at 11 units are going to be replaced. The cost of that was $3.2 million, and we paid for that using ESSER funds. So that is on its way. Um, and Matt can talk more, or if you have questions as it relates to scheduling and who's all involved. I'll just it. chime in. That's going to happen this summer. We meet weekly with Train, who's going to be doing this whole replacement. And so this is all very planned out. We're going to um, we're going to sit with each principal at both schools and also review kind of an aerial view, show where we're going to stock equipment when close to the summer. The other thing I'd add is over February and April vacation, when there's no kids in school, we can get a lot of the pre-wiring to the new units that are going to go right where those existing ones are once we take them off. That pre-wiring will go above the ceiling tiles and up through and kind of be pigtailed for the units to hook up when they get here and we crane them on. But it's a good, those two weeks are a good uh, time without people in the building where we can get a lot of work done. Okay. okay. And then, um, Matt, the, uh, the HVAC units, uh, I think it's appropriate that it's ESSER funded in this case, or we use some of ESSER funds for it. The HVAC units were uh, used in a, in a rather hard way for the top period of COVID, correct? They were. We'll, uh, we'll show you a little bit later some slides of some interior components in sections of the high school units, which also were used hard. But there was a long stretch of time through COVID-19 that we were running those units in full flush mode at 100%, 24-7. So think about, you know, I always <coughs> refer back to a car, but think if you ran your car like that, they're going to age quicker. Um, so we'll, we'll show you some pictures of that and talk through it when we get to those slides. <coughs> Any other questions for Mr. Cashman or Mr. Dunn? Okay. okay. Thank you. I'll we'll move you. on to Beaver Meadow. So, so Beaver, Beaver Meadow. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, Beaver Meadow, we have seven units. You can see two on the roof, kind of on the bottom half above the gym. You see those two units. But then the rest of them are either in the pitched roof <laughs> section where you do see that uh, red dot. And then at the tail end, you have two big units right there that are stacked on top of each other. We had a meeting last week. We have been talking with Unitil. 
a transformer is needed in addition to the transformer that's on site right now. That transformer, the initial projection was to get here on August 12th of 2024. So when I heard that, I took a breath for a minute and I called them together and I, I said, that's cutting it pretty close, you know? So we verified that the new units can run off the existing transformer. The new transformer, which now they are saying could get bumped till October, that's gonna run the dehumidification of those units. So after we talked about it a little bit, we wanna carry on with a plan and replace all those units this summer because we can run them. And if we get lucky, and I'm hoping for a little luck, and that transformer comes in, all of the you know, wiring from the pole to the site and underground to the building will be done this summer, just waiting for that transformer to get placed on a, on a concrete pad. So, so the con transformer comes in in October. Um, can we turn on the dehumidified air by spring of 2025 when it gets hot? We can turn it on, yes, if it comes in. It's just a little bit. Right. These are coming from overseas, yeah. and they're outrageous. What did they say? 70? 90 weeks. 90 weeks. Lead time. So, um, you know, that's an awful long time, but I think that if we carry through with our plan, get everything taken out of the attic and on the rooftops and on the end where it's stacked, we have the power to run those, yeah. so they're new units. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as, you know, there could be a chance that that does come in in August. And if that does, then we've gotten very lucky. Yeah. But I wanted to be realistic. So I, I talked with, obviously, Kathleen, but I talked to the principal of Beaver Meadow, just saying that that's what the situation is. I'd feel much better going into the new school year with seven brand new units versus throwing repair monies at these to um, keep them running. One of the questions that will come up is in the summer, we offer you know extended school year programs. So um, John and his team of assistants will be looking at how we can run those programs and where. So we're, um, a, a, you know, the, the weeks will be limited while they're doing work in the building. So uh, we'll keep you posted on how we want to manage that. But we still want to be able to offer those extended summer programs to our students. Um, but we'll keep you posted. Other questions? Matt, if, uh, if the new transformer comes in and you put it on the pad, will it interrupt any school time to connect it and to switch we, over? Yeah, when we talk to them, it's about a three hour conversion. Mm -hmm. So if we knew, let's say we land that transformer, the pad will be already in place, all of the lines will be ready to go. We would need about three hours of a complete conversion. So we have PD days, we have um, weekends, that we have time mm -hmm. where we could plan it once we know when it comes, then we could plan it with little to no interruption to the school day. No, that's that's great. I was concerned it would be, you know, three, three to weeks. six days, right. not three we hours. Were, we were too. I, really, I guess I, I was <laughs> very surprised. They mm -hmm. said that the, the bulk of the work is what they would do by pulling power in from the summer, pulling, digging a trench and putting power to the building. Mm -hmm. But as long as it's all stubbed up, and that would be the goal, right to the pad, then once the uh, transformer comes in, then everything Do would be hooked up. Do we need new transformers for all of the buildings, or is it just no. something with Beaver uh, Meadow? With Beaver Meadow, uh, as we get and we talk to the uh, train about the high school, there may be, they're just, they, they're getting back to us later this week or next to know, but they, their electrical engineers have looked at the high school. Um, so I can up, we can update you in a weekly board letter to let you know about that if they need it at the high school. If I'm not mistaken, this one we were able to get the transformer from Unitel. We did not pay additional for this one. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So the high school, we, we don't know what that's going to look like. That And you're still going through engineering. Um, but you'll see where we're at with that. Okay. So we, that's why we know two phases, summer 24, summer 25, trying to be conservative because after talking with Unitel when we were on the phone that day, 
He had one that said October, then they just bumped them to March, and yeah. knowing that lead time. But it is good that we're able to put in that equipment and start operating it rather than it sit for a year and then try to do it all in the summer of 25. Okay. So now we move on to the high school. It's a little bit bigger beast. Um, if you remember, as part of Beaver Meadow, which was 3.2, we had mentioned to you about 1.7 to do some of the worst <laughs> units that we have at that school. Um, so that'd be four units. And then um, we count the IT cooling units as one because they're the exact same, but they mirror each other. So if one fails, the other one takes over. So that's why when we said five, it's really six physical units, but the IT is a primary and then a failover. Um, we did because we did have them fail in December. One of them is from 07, and another one is from 2013. So we're taking advantage to update the server room. So that was a million seven. We have that down now to a million six oh two. Um, but the committee had asked about what would it take to do the entire school, because although these the four units would be capable of dehumidified air you could not turn it on because of the rest of the building it just engineering wise it would not work tax the units so um, these are some of the pictures of what Matt deals yeah. with and I'll let him speak to that so when you're driving by the high school and you see these massive boxes on the top of the roof this is there's some pictures here that are inside of those units you can fully stand up a guy jack's height can fully stand up in it so obviously i can make it in there <laughs> with with ease but on the left hand side you can see the filters so i want to say about six or seven years ago we talked to the board about going with a quarterly change out of the filters district wide we have around a thousand filters throughout all of our mechanical systems so we are um, ensuring with those MERV rated filters that we're getting good clean air into the schools. But to Jim's point earlier, if you go to the next slide, you can see just over time, um, they're old units anyway, and we're, we've been using them. We're seeing the effects of the wear and tear. You can see some rusting and some condensation that is built up on the top. These linkage, those are diffusers. So those diffusers are about three to four inches wide, and they can be eight to 10 feet long, and they, um, they control the amount of incoming air, and they're regulated. You can see on that particular picture the metal um, eight frame that it's attached to has snapped off, and a lot of those linkages, they're just old and worn out. We're, we've been using them an awful, awful lot over the last several years so oftentimes if we can't control them with our building management systems we'll have to go and climb up into those units and physically adjust them so think of 22 units on that school that's a lot of it's a lot of things going on this is inside the unit that's a huge fan motor um, for the ventilation unit but you can see it's wear on the side of the outer shell. It's an inside look of the outer shell and how it attaches to the fan assembly. So those fan motors running, vibrating all the time. It is, it, it, it's not surprising that we're seeing this, but it's, um, it's good that we are looking for the full replacement. Again, rust, humidity, uh, rain, that sort of thing. It, it does a number on steel parts. There's some more. That's framing on the inside of one of the units. You can see a door to get in. The other thing I wanted to point out is with the use, that runs, that particular picture is showing what should be six fuses. And we took the fuses out because if you look at the missing ones, you can see the discoloration, those copper leads are you start to see pitting and corrosion when the fuses get old you can copper wiring you can see some burnt ends so we take pictures of these along the way so when we go in there and we replace a wire replace the fuses 
we wanted to show you that it's very labor intensive to keep these running. You can see that's a that's what's known as an actuator valve, controlling the amount of water flow inside those insulated pipes. And you can see some corrosion just from the age. And that is an outside portion of the unit looking at a uh, pneumatic heating controls that um, had failed that we had to replace. That's a cabinet unit heater, actually. So um, this is really in the weeds. So we won't go there unless you want to. But these are the 16 units that we talked about. The scope of work, they'll all be disconnected. They'll be craned off. The new units will be put on. Dunnage is the term for the steel components that help suspend and hold the units on the roof. Um, we'll reuse what we have or add new where they're required. All of the crane work, um, the switch gear, and you see it says upgrade transformer is required. We'll find out shortly if we're going to need a transformer and then get that on order right away if we do. The automatic temperature controls, which is what we're in the process of doing now with all the automation, and then integrate the new units on the roof as well as all factory startup and commissioning. So it's not just, here you go, run them. They need to be ran when they're initially put on and uh, conditioned and commissioned into our program. Just mm -hmm. for Jess's background, <coughs> we had a lot of discussions over this last year mm -hmm. and, um, you know, ultimately recommended to the board that the cost of maintaining the units oh, absolutely. Yeah. was not worth, yep. the, the original proposal was to phase it in mm -hmm. and we didn't really save much with bonding yeah. and we couldn't turn on the dehumidified air and we were paying maintenance, which is why. Yeah. <laughs> No, absolutely. The <laughs> cost of people just fixing this is expensive. I, yeah, we're good. Which is the transformer? Well, luckily we don't have to pay for the transformer oh, right. from Unitil. Um, I'm just saying we should buy some and then sell them. <laughs> <laughs> With a 90 week lead time. Yeah. Like You've storage. seen how big we, we are. We did offer to go get it wherever it was sitting. Yeah. And the guy laughed at us. He goes, you know how many times that gets offered? He goes, you don't have a way of getting this. So okay. We tried. I do just want to make a note. Yes, it is an awful lot of money. But if you recall, throughout the, the warmer months when we're in there, you hear the complaints at Broken Ground, Beaver Meadow, and the high school. So just the mere fact we're not replacing in kind, we're, replace, we're replacing with dehumidified air, yes. that's going to be such a Absolutely. nice change for the occupants, students, and staff. So I'm very, mm -hmm. yeah, very sure. happy that we're able to make this move. Well, we have, in addition, we have employee uh, concerns about health and well-being that came up. Uh, I have two questions for you. Mr. Cashman, okay. um, first uh, is, will this, you mentioned it be controlled, so you would be able to control these from your laptop because they would be integrated into our building management system? That is correct. All right, so that you would be able to adjust, you know, the we can activate the actuators for the... You, you would be setting the temperatures, changing <laughs> temperatures, setting schedules, so let's say, basketball game on a Saturday that you normally wouldn't run that unit and it's cold and you want to run the heat in the room maybe an hour before the game and an hour after, you'd be able to do that. The second question I have is I look here and I see that really, really nice white roof mm -hmm. that we installed a few years ago. Uh, would any of this work cause damage to the roof or require additional repairs or modifications to that roof? No, we're not expecting that. What what the new units coming on, they're all measured to the curbs from the roof mm -hmm. that go vertical. So broken ground, which we're going to do this summer, has that same roof. So all those curb cuts is what they call them, have been measured. So when they're carefully taken off, they do put plywood and other protection down. So that if they have to set a unit on the roof, they're setting on it on a set of wood sleepers 
so it doesn't cut or damage the roof. Mm -hmm. And then when they crane off the other unit, they crane the other one in its place. So it's all pre-fit, pre-measured ahead of time. Okay. And I would assume they have really good insurance for when they lift <laughs> no, it up. Yeah. We um, can get into that. I hope so. <laughs> the other yeah. thing I notice, and you can talk to it or you can tell me that I'm, um, uh, you know, into an area I don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, these units, as I look around, are all, when I looked at the Beaver Meadow units, they seemed to be enclosed uh, under the roof and under a protection. These are not. Is that something that we will change? Is that something that we want to change? Or what are your thoughts on that? So we talked about it on Saturday. Yeah. And I yes, hadn't but I want to talk yes, uh, here. Yes, I was like, when did we have that conversation? Yes, we we talked like about it just a few days ago. Publicly, um, or at least get your opinion publicly. So I'm reaching out to some structural engineers just to see the likelihood. When you go and you introduce introduce more weight onto a roof, mm -hmm. you need to make sure ahead of time that you have the proper structure in place. Okay. So that's one. Two. Um, we would be disrupting the roof at that point. Mm -hmm. Now I'd have, you know, if we built a shroud out over each one, we'd have to get into the roof so we could fasten it to the roof. So that, that's kind of concerning to me. But then I'd also want to take a hard look at what's the total cost to do 22 units? And is the rate of return worth it? You know? Yes, versus, I want you to take that look too. <laughs> yeah, because flip the coin here when you're looking at building a new school or when you look at the three newer elementary schools we built we built space on the roof that's enclosed okay. so when you when you're considering that if you do it early on in construction or part of the design i tend to believe it's going to be a lot cheaper than if you do it as a after uh, after the fact fair enough thank you for that sure. explanation does anyone have any other questions for Mr. Cashman or Mr. Dunn on this particular item? This was something we discussed this past summer, summer, fall, I'm trying to remember. And I had thought the full board approved moving ahead with the full Yeah, you just wanted to see the what the total school. cost was going to be. Yeah. This is just the financial. The fin yeah, yep. Yeah. And then you make a motion to the full board to say, yep, put it in, get ready to start bonding this okay. thing. Um, That's what's coming. But are we still wait? Is this the final on the high school? Or are we still waiting for estimates? Nope. This is so. What the high school will be? It'll be the 1.7 or 1.602, 1 1 whatever I wrote, yep. plus the 15.4 for a total of 17 million. Yeah. Which is less than we originally thought, right? Yeah, originally we were thinking 23, okay. then we were at 20, 18, mm -hmm. and now I'm down to 17. Okay. So, but uh, we're supposed to get the engineer's report in the next couple of weeks to finalize it. Um, what's what's going to be needed, and then um, we'll do the bond. We'll prepay and set this up. Okay. So just as a summary to give you an idea, because as I mentioned early on, this was, we planned on putting in your budget, and you're reaffirming that. Um, there's the breakdown of the amounts, um, and the. Uh, First year payment will be 1.9 million for the bond for um, the Beaver Meadow portion that we need to reimburse ourselves. These two combined, because that was the f the four plus two units plus the other 16 units to make 22 total. The buses, so it's 19.9 million. Do you have a full bond schedule? I will have those once you say okay. Then they're going to plug in each year because I'll have 10 and 20. They gave me a lump sum of tw about 20 million. So those numbers I expect, and that's based on four and a quarter percent. I expect us to do better once we go out. That's why you'll see in my motions about putting in the correct numbers, because it probably won't happen till after, but you can always adjust your budget later on. But that's what we'll do and come back to you and say, this is what we budget, this is what it is. I'm trying to get as close as I can, but you know, I, I, I would hope we'd be in the low threes. Okay. Any other questions? This is one that I believe um, does fall into either 
of our committees. So if someone would like to make a, a motion. Move that the Capital Facilities and Finance Committees recommend that the school board approve the replacement of the HVAC system at Concord High School for $17,002,500 and prepare the necessary public documents and public meeting to vote on the bonds to fund the HVAC system replacement at Concord High School. The board also understands that it authorized the replacement of the broken ground HVAC system with ESSER funds, the Beaver Meadow Schools HVAC with ESSER funds and proceeds from general funds to be reimbursed from bonds. This reimbursement was passed by the school board in July 2023. The board further authorizes the administration to put the bond payments into the FY25 budget. Final numbers will replace the budget numbers when the bonds are sold. Okay. Is there a second? I second seconded by Ms. Campbell. Is there any further discussion? All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye, and this would be both committees. Aye. aye. Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. That recommendation motion passes. Okay. All right. Better up. COMF, Common Operations Maintenance Facility. That is the acronym for the facility that was built in the 90s, I believe, up at the, off of um, North State Street. In there houses all the maintenance vehicles for the city. And we take a little corner right there on the edge for the buses. Um, I think we've been up there since the late 90s, maybe early 2000s. The uh, school district used to own if you know where Merrill Radiator is off of Pembroke Road, yeah, the buses all used to that's be where the buses there. used to be. That property was sold, put on the tax rolls, and the school district moved into here. So um, you can see the buses this is where they are, and the salt shed that is down here. So that is one of the biggest struggles that they have with these buses for that. Mm -hmm. Is there anything we can do about that as we negotiate a new <laughs> lease agreement? <laughs> we. Yeah, obviously it'll involve money. Um, so we are talking with them about redesign, but that's going to be separate from this piece. Um, because obviously it'd be something that we would have to jointly do together. Uh, as with the same thing as we're looking at the electric buses and where they would go and how we have to run, all that is in play. Okay. We actually looked at them We went, when we went over, remember? Yeah. We did a site walk with Terry and looked at up on the, it, it's sort of an embankment and a hill yeah. to yeah. put them up there, but it has to be redesigned otherwise. It's very yeah. muddy. It's not It's mm -hmm. not easy to maneuver for those buses. You know, you remember, there's a 77 and 88 passenger buses. There's some, so, <coughs> but we did look at trying to move those buses out of that spot, mm -hmm. but we would have to do a redesign. Jack, doesn't, doesn't this, I mean, this is a joint, this is the city, doesn't the city have vehicles there that are affected by the salt as well? No, because we're, we're here and they're all over here. So they do their loaders and then go out that way. So. So is it an operational thing as to when, I mean, it's, it's when they're open and using that as opposed to that's just one component there during the summer and obviously when the trucks go in and out they're bringing salt plus you have to salt the things to stop them from being slick so right. it's a combination and i would assume that the city does have probably some of its challenges but they're also their vehicles are small enough these are sheds they're putting some of their vehicles inside mm -hmm. those sheds which is helping keeping it away from the elements so, you know, part of the discussion has been, okay, do you cut into here, mm -hmm. but you're talking ledge, mm -hmm. it's a hill, mm -hmm. so we could get out of the way, but that's going to involve money. Some work. And right now, and from what you see, from what we get for what we have, I think that's a fairly good deal between the school district and the city working together, especially, as you know, the fuel farm that they just replaced. And you could see it now when you drive down <coughs> North State Street. It lights up. You can really see it now that that's complete. Um, but all the fuel is there. We purchase that stuff jointly. We actually use more fuel than they do. So um, we jointly do that together. Um, I think we use 50, yeah, 50, about 50,000 gallons of diesel and 20,000 of gasoline a year. So. I'll move on to the highlights of it. But again, it is owned by the city. 
um, in our discussions with them, they proposed, well, we've jointly proposed a 10-year lease rather than doing three or five, just going out. All the utilities are included, heat, the a AC units, all that is already built into the lease number. Um, the only thing that would not is that if we migrated to EV, we need to work together on how we parse that out separately, which was understandable. If we want to make improvements that's done with their approval, we would work jointly and go through all the appropriate city and zoning channels to, to do that. We do pay and have paid for years a 10 cent per gallon surcharge on fuel. And the reason why is they don't bill us to repair pumps, do anything to work on the fuel farm or anything else. That's, That's awesome. it. We don't get any supplemental bills. So all that is used to keep we in the paid to replace the fuel farm. Mm -hmm. Correct. So their repair but then costs there's are going down. I assume. Then there'll be ongoing costs to maintain measurements, the city, all the regulations as it relates to hazardous. So you do 50,000 gallons, that's five 5,000 bucks a year for the diesel side of things. So it's probably a small in comparison to us getting all these little bills for this and that. So, but there's the first five years. And um, they're sending over the other five did not print in there when they gave it to us, but that's the whole lease there. They just did not include the other five, so I've let them know. Uh, they had me go through it for edits, so um, we expect the three percent to continue for another five. And it was that has that been the average increase that we've been mm -hmm. paying? Yep. And does that gel with what the city's average increase in their budget for that facility is? You can look into it, Mr. Dunn, and get back yeah. to us. I yeah. mean, if we're paying a 3% increase and they're not increasing their expenditures over there, three. Well, I'm going to guess all their staff goes up. Their yeah. health care costs mm -hmm. go up a lot more than ours. I know they're at like 16%. We're at 9.7. So um, for what we get and all that parking, if I tried to find this somewhere else, because we had discussions about that, one thing is not embedded in that lease is property taxes, mm -hmm. where if we go anywhere else, we're going to pay property taxes because they're going to be embedded that into the lease. Mm -hmm. Then we probably would have to set up a contract with the state in order to get fuel, unless we say we'll keep things and go all the way over there. The school district did own um, where a Sandy's pet food store mm -hmm. that was bought in the 90s for the purpose of being a transportation center. Um, but uh, it never happened. It wound up being a site that uh, asbestos tiles were dumped on that was not investigated. So um, it was sitting on our assets and we dumped it. Cleaned it up and dumped it. So I, I mean, I, yep. I'm all for staying with the city. I just mm -hmm. think that we should make sure, you know, mm -hmm. um, knowing that it, you know, it's reasonable. Go ahead, Ms. Meeker. The new fuel farm, it mm -hmm. says that we are in the first year of payments on a 20-year payment. Yep. Is this whether we stay or not, we we're locked into a 20-year agreement with them, or that's just for as long as we're on the property? That's as long as we're on the property. Okay. So if, not that we are moving, but say right. we moved and we have a 10-year lease and we move after 10 years, we no longer have to pay for the fuel farm. Right. And the reason that's higher than it was, but they had asked um, Merrimack Valley, who was doing there, and they decided to go to the state and not participate. So we're picking up a third instead of a quarter. So. And then um, moving from a three or five year lease to a 10 year lease, does that put us in a better position to negotiate our, um, you know, lease payments? That's how we got to the three. Yeah, that's what I was We I was figured that was kind of. You know, long term, nobody needs to worry about it, and we're good for quite a while. And they're they are great to work with. Yeah. So it sounds like the three percent is yeah a good rate. Really so. It's not anything we would need to drill down on. No. Okay. No. I mean, uh, obviously, I'll go into because you're asking, but mm -hmm. that is what we had come up with. They thought it was fair to taxpayers, and they're picking we're picking up some portion of that because mm -hmm. that's all in there. I mean, you get into electric and heat. I could ask what those <coughs> bills would be, and we see what it is for these buildings. But you're so. satisfied with 
what we've negotiated. For what they've done mm -hmm. for us and how we work jointly together, mm -hmm. I, I think it's, it's good. Would we like to see improvements up there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they would too. Okay. And that would be a joint discussion because it mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense for us to fix one side and then not do the other. But mm -hmm. each is picking up their portion. It's just a matter of politically when is how much does this rise to well, let's put all the money up here when we have as you've just seen with HVAC issues and they're going to have infrastructure needs on their side so it works thank you other questions no so I had put a motion here but you can wait or whatever however you want to handle because I'll have the information for you on Monday night because we'll have a conversation with them uh, are we on a deadline with the city at all or can well, it we currently it's expired in June so or but you know we know who they are they know where we live we know where they live so <laughs> it's kind of one of those you know <laughs> right uh, would the committee prefer to wait to get the answers to the questions that uh, Ms. Walsh posed to Mr. Dunn or are you comfortable with someone making a motion at this point Good. Yeah, and if, okay. as long as the answers are by Monday. Okay. And the contract has the full. Right the other, the yeah. other five years. The other, the other five, five years. Because yeah. right now the contract we're presented with doesn't have the other five and years. And going back, well, I know Jim Kennedy is anxious because he's done February 9th. So he, we had been talking, and he's like, You're going to actually get this done for me? I said, I hope. <laughs> have they hired a replacement? I don't know. I did not. Mm -hmm. We were not. Privy to that. Yeah, don't know. So. Okay, with that, do I have a do I have a motion with regards to the CMF release? I move that the Capital Facilities and Finance Committee recommend that the school board approve the 10-year lease agreement and authorize the superintendent or superintendent's designee to sign the lease agreement with the city to house the district's transportation staff and buses. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Campbell. Is there any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Not seeing any. All those, and this is both, once again, both committees. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That motion passes. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Next, you have in front of you uh, the B101 2017 AIA document, which is a standard agreement between the owner which is the school district and the architect for architectural services or as they call it, design team contractors. It's not just an architect, it is a whole team of people. In that contract list the various contracts that the, or the vendors that they will be using to help design your school. It also has the fee for this and list everything that they will do as part of this contract, which I've listed up here as part of their standard services for us. Um, one thing that's important to note that, it, that this isn't subject to the cap, the um, state building aid cap. So mm -hmm. you're going to have your soft costs and your hard costs. Mm -hmm. So you'll be reimbursed 40% of this fee from the state once they issue it then we would apply it to that but this will take you from schematic design now which you're in all the way through closeout which means occupancy and they go bye-bye okay this was looked at from your attorney um, and we went through and made those edits um, I, they accepted all our requests. Um, and that's, that is, this is also in your drive too, and however you want, depending on what you do tonight, what us, want us to do with it as it relates to, I mean, we're going to post it, but I don't know what you wanted to do after that. But if you have questions, I'll do what I can to try to answer. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Walsh. Um, 
I notice uh, some of the key subs are outlined in here. Mm -hmm. If they bring on anyone else, do you have approval? Like if there's a need for another type of subcontractor, I'll I'm not sure what mm -hmm. it would be, but mm -hmm. just in case. We, <laughs> we would, would, we're at the table. So. You have approval, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, a lot of these will be vetted with us in our discussions um, with them and anybody we bring on, any proposals, they share this with us. Um, and they usually send us the stuff in Word as well, which is nice. Okay. Other questions? The state. We don't get building aid. The board decides not to go forward next year. Mm -hmm. Are we on the hook for their whole fee or just for what has been done? Today? So my discussion with them as it related to that is if we were to stop, yeah, we're in the middle of the contract, but it would have to be a discussion on how long are we talking about because when it would happen, Building codes change. Yeah. Do they have to come back now and start to redo work they've already done? So um, that has been the discussion on where we would go if you stop. But what does it say in the contract about what would happen if we stopped? Is there an out clause? We, do, we did not put an out clause. Okay. Should we? I mean, mm -hmm. we may go forward if we get built. You know, based on the numbers we talked about at our retreat, we yep. might go forward if we don't get building aid. We might not. Mm -hmm. um, and the point of even when I said, okay, we're going to try again in two years, there's a lot of um, changes that could happen that sure. yep. we could end up paying for a design for a building that we can't use. So I guess the question is, should we go back and set have a contingency for what happens if we don't move forward next June? Well, you can do that if you think that that's a good possibility. There might be a premium to do that, but it's fine. I don't know what others yeah. think. And no. what that premium, and I don't know yeah, what that premium know. would be, but. Yeah. They might just say, no, it's fine. You stop, then yeah, that fund stops. But then I've, you know, we also kicked around the idea, oh, they stop doesn't mean they're going to stop picking up projects. So if I say stop, how long? Is it till the next building cycle? Yeah. Does that team wind up changing? So we're going forward as if, you know, we're moving forward. But if you want me to change that up with them, I can see what it would take to do that. Other comments? Is, I guess my question would be to Pam's question, how, how common is it for, I mean, th this can't be a new thing, right? Districts probably have these large projects that they have to contract with architects, you know, all over the place. So I'm curious to know how common it is to have those protections for any number of things that could happen in the community. Yeah, a lot of projects level. get voted down, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're in a rare position where we can continue to move forward mm -hmm. without a, necessarily a, a vote of the community, but mm -hmm. uh, I have to imagine there has to be yeah. standard language that we could research, and I would be interested to know what the premium would be. Okay. Um, and I'm just wondering, I don't know if there is, not that I want to negotiate publicly. I mean, we've done it with our architects, but we'll yeah. go back and look at that for you, and we'll have an answer for you on Monday. Yeah. It's not a problem. Okay. I think it's good. We're yeah. confident that even if we didn't get building aid, that we would be able to progress with the building with modifications, with the project with modifications. But I think it's prudent to um, have that discussion Absolutely. with them and get their, their input source to look at. So if we can do that, Mr. Dunn? Yep. Uh, is everyone in agreement with asking Mr. Dunn to do that? Yeah. Okay. So that's a breakdown of the fee, and that is in the contract. That's where I pulled it from. And so when you get 40%, your fee now becomes $6.181 million. $6,181,943.20. Can you talk about how, and you and I have talked about this, yep. how this fee relates to sort of industry mm -hmm. 
statewide standards, yep. what, you know, in terms of how it gets set yep. and how it relates to what we have in our estimate? Yep. So um, typical HMFH fee is 10% of the estimate, okay, mm -hmm. construction document. That is the reimbursable allowed by um, Massachusetts Building Authority. Our number is based on 7.5%. We negotiated that down because we said it's not a mass firm, and they recognize we've done work with them before, um, and that's how this was derived: seven and a half percent of the estimate. So, um, typically, a range for New Hampshire is between seven and seven point seven five is what we got, mm -hmm. and we're at seven and a half. And we had in the. End oh, sorry, I had in the budget nine. So we're down Which was to, 12 million. We're down to so. 174 oh. million. Oh. <laughs> the, one, the 176. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I do have uh, a couple of questions. Number sure. one, because we have already seen some preliminary design of the school, you know, that's mm -hmm. the picture that we used for the various sites. Is there some portion of schematic design that has already been done and paid for, or do we start? from zero and the 1.5 million is now worth. that was part of the argument of driving it down mm -hmm. because they yeah. they pretty much started to touch into that area because you went so far in your design yeah. stuff so okay. okay and then you know a, it's kind of an absurd question but let's say we're all like financial geniuses and we get this cost of the school down to like you know half of what it was does this number stay the same yes okay it's based on the estimate, not yep. the. Yeah, it's based because you're going to go there. I have to reach out to consultants, right. you know, the geotech, the geotherm, all that stuff to come up with a number. And then, so we, one of the things we went back with them based on services included, excluded, was will you have, between the building committee yourselves, will we have enough information to make educated decisions on what to value engineer out or value an engineer in? And they said yes. That was what I was concerned about when I had saw some of the additional services. And like I said, the geothermal, because we don't want to cut that off when we've said we're doing a sustainability threat. We're going through this whole process of what the community has requested for a building, which now you're about to go through and say, okay, this is what you requested. This is where we were. This is what we think we can feasibly afford, and this is what you want in it. But that will be the number. Not including anything else that you might add if you decide to go further with something in particular, but that's your base number. Right, they could. That number could get bigger, but it's not potentially get smaller. Yeah, like if you go full blown geotech, start thinking what they have to bring in another expert to make all that happen. So that's why we've cut some of that out to say we don't want to pay for something we may not do, but it's there if you decide to continue on. Because they were telling me just to dig one well is fifty thousand dollars. And I don't know how many well, I don't know any of that. that but they, they would just give me examples. And we thought, nope, if we're going to do it, we'll keep going. And that's what you'll have contingency for. Mm -hmm. OK. <clears throat> OK. And the building committee will be taking that on fairly soon, I would expect. OK. <clears throat> Does someone care to make a motion? Move that the Capital Facilities and Finance Committees recommend that the school board approve the contract for $10,300,257 and authorize the superintendent or superintendent's designee to sign the contract with HMFH to provide design services for the new middle school and to appropriate, appropriate the funds for the contract or a combination of the board's facilities and renovation bonds and reimbursements from Brown proceeds. The committee understands that the contract is subject to a 40% reimbursement from the state. Is there a second? Can I ask a question? Sure. Can we, can we wait until we have the verbiage on the out, or is that not recommended? Or If, if we we're going to do a recommendation to the board. Got it. Okay. We have to do it tonight, but... That can come up in the... But we can still have the discussion okay. Monday night, which is the, why I was comfortable 
okay. recommending that There's we go forward. Yeah. Got it. I suck it. No, no, that's no, no. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Does that make sense? Thank you. Jess, you second. Uh, moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? And I'll, this is both committees. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. This will be discussed. Okay. Well, well we are at uh, what? Twenty-seven minutes to seven. So that's pretty good. We got through. Um, most of the heavy hitters, this is the last one that I have. Anyway, well, and, the um, president has. <laughs> I drafted this up, and I apologize for not sitting around. It sort of occurred to me at 445 that um, if we are going to create the building committee at the next board meeting, we needed we, we should have the committee mm -hmm. review committee's review of proposal. So I came up with this. I'm open for suggestions, um, especially if there's typos. But... Um, Give you time to read it. Somebody has a better suggestion for the workflow of the middle school project. I just was trying to get in the idea that not every, the future of the Runlet site committee wasn't going to start meeting next right. week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Will there be discussion on committee members before they're appointed? Well, I, I think we did that last week, and I'm open for other suggestions, and I'm also open was trying to figure out how to keep the process moving, you know, so that's what I came up with based on our other procedures, but if people have a different way they want to do it, we can talk about that as well. But yes, I think continue to have discussions about uh, members. Did you want a, a number? I didn't put the number in at the end of the day because I thought Let's be flexible. Let's leave ourselves a little flexibility um, in case we realize we have not. I think we, in our retreat, set as a goal that we thought the subcommittee should have no more than seven. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I thought it could come up that we realize we've left out an important voice mm -hmm. and that we, so that we need to increase the membership and that we should leave ourselves that option. Do we want to leave ourselves an option? This just assigns those committees, um, programming, sustainability, et cetera. Do we want to leave an option for a future committee to be included in this if we find something that is necessary? We could. I, I guess I thought the reason I did not put that in there because I it was because I would assume that if we wanted to add a subcommittee, that should come back to the board. Okay. No, I'm, I'm talking you know, about that. I just was, wanted to ask that question. Is what I was thinking that, okay. you know, we want, you know, that another subcommittee should come then come back okay. to the board for its approval. No, I'm fine with that. I just am yep. trying to, to be flexible enough of yep. something we may not have foreseen yep. that we would want yep. to have that. But I'm okay with this. Okay. Um, Are we leaving the committees and subcommittees to choose their chair? Procedurally, would it just follow any other? Never thought. Yeah, I would. I would yeah. absolutely bring those folks together mm -hmm. and let them choose a chair. Okay. And let them. Um, other questions? Mm -mm. Does someone wish to make this motion? If not, I. I I'm like, <coughs> let me get some water. <laughs> I, got, I got this for you. I move to motion the Concord School Board um, to direct the creation of a middle school building committee to oversee the design and construction of a new middle school. The committee shall include all members of the Capital Facilities Committee, the middle school principal, a representative of the superintendent, a representative of city government with relevant technical expertise, and members of the community with relevant experience, including in construction, engineering, and middle school programming. Members of the committee shall be appointed by the president of the school board. 
the Concord School Board hereby would direct the creation of the following subcommittees to the Middle School Building Committee. Programming, sustainability, site design, traffic and transportation, future of the runlet side, and transition. All subcommittees will include at least one member of the board, as well as members of the school district and representatives of the community relative, relevant experience. Members shall be appointed by the president of the school board. Subcommittees shall meet as needed in accordance with the workflow of the middle school project. All meetings of the middle school building committee shall be posted and open to the public in accordance with New Hampshire state law. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Really good. I would second it with an amendment. Oh, I sure. just think we add with input from board members after both times the members are selected by the president of the school board. I just think it needs yeah. Yeah, more. No, I think that's, that's fine. I would second that amendment. Yep. And uh, so for if there's a discussion of that amendment, otherwise let's vote on that. All those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? I want to say aye, but I'm not sure. I've totally heard you. I oh, okay. so put from board members. So where it says the members of the committee should be appointed by the president of the school board, comma, comma. with input from board members. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, aye. And I also have an amendment <laughs> okay, on the ahead. final paragraph. All meetings of the school building, middle school building committee, and its subcommittees. Oh, yeah. So okay, should, the, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think we might I'm trying to. There we go. Look at this in real time, huh? Oh, okay, li ladies and gentlemen. Um, Is there a second to my amendment? I need first to go back to the Thank amendment you. that Barb made. So Barb made that amendment, right? So and who seconded yeah. that? Did Jim? I seconded okay. that amendment. All right. And then that was all in favor, right? Yes. Everybody <laughs> voted 5-0. Okay. Then Pam made a motion for an amendment, right, Pam? Yes. And then who seconded that? Barb. 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 Okay. And we have not voted on that amendment So yet, would you repeat where you want to put that so I ha make sure I have that? And it's subcommittees shall be posted. So in the last paragraph. Last so, <laughs> how about, and then, and it's sorry, and then following the president of the school board, and then what should it say yeah. after that? Oh, he just put With it, input yeah. from okay. board members, yeah. it would go under both times that that sentence is in there. So okay. that one and then down below. Jack, are you putting them in yep. now? I yep. see it. Okay, so I great. Can, yep. All right. This, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some, uh, yeah. While you're making amendments, may I make a comment? Um, we had discussed using the phrase working groups oh. versus subcommittees. Mm -hmm. um, partly, I think we felt the working groups were going to report to the Did. building committee and the building committee because the subcommittees are going to have people that are not members of the public members from all sorts they're not of members right so right. I think subcommittee implies a voting like a vote in a structure and really what we had discussed was yeah. that Working. they're going to do research get feedback okay. you know and and then report back so that was something so I will move to change subcommittees to working groups can we vote on your first oh <laughs> I thought we had I'm sorry can we vote on to the I think for one amendment uh, okay. well you could make you no could no no let's just do them one at a time okay so uh, the uh, amendment that is currently up for a vote <coughs> is the one that says uh, includes building committee and its subcommittees on the last uh, paragraph there um, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Dunn, for that. And uh, so, um, is there any further discussion on this amendment? Not seeing any. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that amendment passes. Ms. Walsh, you're recognized for your next amendment. <laughs> I will amend. Um, subcommittees to say the following working groups to support the middle school building committee and then change all references to subcommittees to working groups yeah. where's my first one Sorry. second paragraph first okay. line yeah the following working groups and I added to support the middle school building committee. Okay. And then um, all the next sentence. Yep. Oh, all yeah. working groups. Okay. 
um, and then okay. working group she'll meet. And then it just sounds better too. Mm -hmm. And then in the last where we just changed, it, amended mm -hmm. it to add subcommittees, let's amend those to working groups. Is there a second? Yeah. A second. Seconded by Ms. Campbell. Is there any further discussion on this amendment? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? This amendment passes. So is there any further discussion on the overall proposed motion? Should we put it max? I'm just, I mean, I would love lots of engagement. Are we worried about too much, or is that not something we should worry about? Like, what if, I, mean, I just want to be in a position where it's like, oh, we should add this person, add person. Like, at what point do we cut that line and say, that's enough of that Well, I think we set a goal. We, okay. I mean, during our retreat, we set a goal. Okay, that's not bad, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we could put okay. it in there. I no. just think it becomes... I know. I, I, I spent a lot of time do doing like executive orders, creating task force for state government, and like I, I, I learned like the more you limit yourself in the beginning, the more you're amending executive orders. That's so, <laughs> that's so fair. Okay. That's what yeah. open enough to. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think we're gonna have that money. Yeah. yeah. Um. So. This is, I can't remember who moved and seconded this Let's original. Move by yes. And seconded. Seconded. Yeah, seconded. 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 I know it was moved and seconded. I just couldn't thank yep. you. I couldn't remember who. Is there any further discussion on this motion? All right. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Are there any abstentions? This motion passes. Thank you all. Great slide. That's, that's all I have. <laughs> Whether you want to continue, it's good. Uh, for me, I'm good. I move to adjourn. <laughs> so, the motion to adjourn has been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? We are adjourned. Thank you all. Drive safely.